Hello everyone and welcome again. Today we would like to present you the content of our currently newest volume, Chess Informant 122 Mechanics. We hope that you watched our video explaining how to install our digital products. If you remember, we showed that after successfully installing the product, an icon would appear on your desktop. Here, there are icons of recent Chess Informant volumes made as CBH books. 116 to 118, 119, 120, 121, and the one we want to explore further, 122. Ernesto in Kiev brings us the first column, which is dedicated to the world title match played between Carlson and Anand in Sochi. Ernesto is a very strong GM and his feeder rating from 2012 until now is constantly around 2700. Here, you may learn more about him. In this column, Ernesto dissects the crucial moments of the match, presenting game two as the best game of the match in his opinion, then game six as the crucial one review on the openings psychology describing playing strength of both players bringing us the play highlights of both players and this all is supplemented by the Sochi equation written by Grandmaster Alexander Cholovic, Macedonian Olympic team member and well-known chess blogger. Next column is coming from one of the most creative players of the open era, Russian super GM Alexander Morozevich, and it is his regular chess informant column Midnight in Moscow. This time Alexander is leading us through avoiding the Semish by a less traveled road. The article is based on exploring a line of the old Indian defense where Alexander showed what had inspired him uh, for the topic and as always demonstrates his own analytical point of view putting many questions with detailed explanations how to look for the best answer. If you are regularly reading his column in Chess Informant, you will notice that Alexander of course uses the help of computer engines, but never trusts them blindly, and it is certainly the way he is teaching all the readers how to recognize the quality of these analyses, and from which point to follow human logic. This might be an easy task for an experienced super GM like Alexander, but there is no better way to learn well than to learn from the best. Alexander's unique style of narration, spiced with a dose of irony, can be seen here, for example, where he says, there are two principal replies, knight g5 and knight d2. The move knight g1, I leave for real assets. As an addition to this column, there is a curiosity noticed by our editorial board, and it is explained in the title Reflections on the Midnight in Moscow column from Chess Informant 121. In Chess Informant 120 Maracana, Morozovic deals with this opening line, knight f3, d5, c4, d4, b4, g5. A month later, at the Troms Olympiad, our regular contributor Sharunas Shulski is inspired by Morozovic's article, applied this move g5 in Venezuela-Lithuania match at board 1 versus Eduardo Iturizaga. But now we come to the point. In Chess Informant 121, Midnight Sun, Morozovic presents an almost forgotten fifth move, Bishop d3, in advanced Karakan, giving a full research on the options for both sides. At the Petrosian Memorial in Moscow, 
In November 2014, Chess Informant 121 was delivered at the opening ceremony to all the participants of this super tournament. At this picture, you will see the passion with which Chinese superstar Li Ding is reading volume 121. Eventually, in the last round of the tournament, we came to the Morozovic Dingy counter. In the named article, uh, after White's seventh move, Bishop G5, Morozovic commented, so as not to end this article on a minor note for all Karakhan fans, I will suggest an idea for Black at an even earlier stage. In the position after bishop g5 instead of the principal queen b6, Black can try, wrote Morozovic in chess informant 121, and now it's a challenge for the author himself. Ding plays namely queen d7, a novelty in the tournament praxis, and like we can hear him say, okay, Enough with home analysis, let's do some over the board real time test. After a very complex battle, the game ended in a draw. So, chess informant series is described as the periodical that pros use, but could we possibly ask for a better justification of it? Next column is Windmill by Grandmaster Ivan Sokolov, who puts the light on Veselin Topolov's comeback to the 2800 club. Not only that Ivan is a very strong grandmaster, but also he's a person who knows Veselin's personality very well and it's really interesting to read how he describes Veselin's general approach to chess and this great period of his career. As Ivan put it, I hope you will enjoy playing over the games as much as I enjoyed compiling them. The fourth column, Old Wine in New Bottles, is coming from another informant's regular contributor, Romanian Grandmaster Mikhail Marin. This time, he deals with an evergreen topic, Lasker's double bishop sacrifice. At the same time, giving an answer to the question from the article title, is chess a matter of memory? All this is enriched with several modern games combined with some classics and in the end as a cherry on the top her recently retired greatest female player in chess history Judith Polgar won against former world champion Anatoly Karpov by using the topic's motive. Stand Up and Fight is brought by new USA chess team member Wesley Saw. Wesley is famous in the chess world as an excellent theoretician and here he presents some theoretically important games play at the Troms Olympiad, giving very detailed analysis of possible options for both sides, as well as his personal recommendations, like here. Intuition is a word that usually goes with prefix women's. Nine-time Olympiad participant Grandmaster Katerina Rahamia Grant leads us through selection of games from the Women's Olympiad in Tromso and presents its own share of drama and excitement. Grandmaster Sharunas Shulskis is not only the standard board one of the Lithuanian chess team, but he is also Chess Informant's standard author of the column named Interception. Do you guys know what do Nakamura, Jobava, and Rapport have in common? 
The answer to this lies in Sharuna's choice for this article, and it is something that is often called an offbeat opening, and namely B3 at the first move, the Nimtsovich Larsen opening. All three named Super GMs, along with the author himself, played this opening as white in 2014, and they all won against very solid Grandmaster opponents. Each of these four games started with the first move B3, but all four led to very different type of positions, showing some fresh and creative ideas. Playing B3 on move 1 may never enter one's repertoire, but after reading this article, we are sure the chess player of any strength would wish to play it at least once in some blitz game. On the other hand, it can be quite a deadly weapon if you manage to surprise your opponent and ruin his hours of preparation. The absolute premiere of a completely new view at a certain opening line is presented in Chess Informant 122 and is named Mirroring. Swedish Grandmaster Emanuel Berg reveals all pros and cons of a popular tabia, the Berlin Rai Lopez. First, he takes the white side and, well, he supports it without reservations. And immediately after that, he switches sides using the reflection in the mirror, in both cases giving his recommendations and detailed description of plans. Having seen the majority of columns we have presented so far, one may get the impression that Chess Informant 122 is like an opening guide. Well, now is the right moment to prove different. German Grandmaster Karsten Miller, in his column Endgame Strategy, deals with one of the fundamental chess principles, the principle of two weaknesses. The author explains this principle through various examples from the games mostly played in 2014 at the highest level, which makes this material a highly instructive tool for any chess player. Now, we have two articles from CI Labs, uh, that is abbreviation for Chess Informant Laboratories. CI Labs are truly in-depth opening surveys covering specific echo code lines. In the first one, experienced Lithuanian Grandmaster Eduardas Rosentalis explores a lately very popular line, the Moscow variation of Sicilian defense. while in the second one, Serbian Grandmaster Robert Markus reveals his analysis in a very popular Fianchetto variation of the King's Indian defense. And that had to be kept safe for the whole year before he got a chance to play it in two Grandmaster games. As a conclusion to this, keep your analysis safe, but fresh. Sooner or later, you'll get a chance to use them. The last column of this modern part of Chess Informant is actually the penultimate issue of the series called Muscle Up. Being a lifelong Sicilian player, 10-time Greek champion Grandmaster Vasilios Kotronias introduces a full repertoire for black versus C3 Sicilian, successfully meeting all white's attempts of gaining an advantage. Now let's get back to the traditional part. The best game of the previous volume of Chess Informant
the most important theoretical novelty of the previous volume selection of combinations made by Grandmaster Branko Tadic who is Chess Informant's editor-in-chief selection of endings made by international master Goran Arsovic, member of Chess Informant's editorial board selection of studies made by International Master Johanan Afek and the selection of two hundred sixty six fully annotated games and sub-games. At the very end, there is the overview of the most important tournaments played in the last three months, presenting the final standings and cross tables. Well, this is how it looks when traditional meets modern. We hope that you like what you have just seen here in the video. And for more details regarding purchase and delivery, as well as for our other products, you may visit our web store at www.chessinformant.org. Also, as you may know, for all your questions, comments, and suggestions, we are available almost 24-7 at chess at informant9066.com. Thank you for your time. Be well, stay tuned, and see you soon in our next video.